know, someone said to me recently, Matt, they said, how'd you do it? And I was a bit confused, to be honest. I was like, well, what, what do you mean? How, how do I do what? They looked me directly in the eye like this. And they said, how do you manage to look so good all the time? How do you manage to look so youthful and vibrant and yet so self-assured and happy and so cool? <laughs> and I was like, no, I, I think you're taking a mick a bit now, aren't you? That's not me you're talking about. You can't mean me. Really? Is that, is that how you see me? Really? Is it? Is that what you think? And they said, yeah, genuinely. How do you do it? And I was still a little bit, you know, I was going, are you sure you mean me? They said, genuinely, how do you do it? And I was just about to tell them, but I couldn't because that's when I woke up. And in these cold winter days, of course, you wake up in the dark and misery soon sets in. Right now, the cold light of day is cold, but really not that light. Nobody is asking me how I'm so great. It was just a big, silly dream. There are no two ways about it. This time of year is tough and and grim and horrible. It's a time when, yeah, we all feel like retreating into ourselves and going, ah! It's a time when we start to feel negative about ourselves. I mean, come on, of, of course we're going to feel negative about ourselves. It's, it's miserable out there. It's that bit colder, wetter, darker. If there's any time of year when we're we're already susceptible to that negative voice in our head. This is it. This is the time of the darkness. This is the time when beauty fades and, and the beast takes over. And I'm talking about the beast inside us. That negative voice. That voice that makes us feel horrible. And this year, of course, it's even worse, isn't it? Because the whole Covid situation... The lockdown, not lockdown, tiers one, two and three. We're worried about our loved ones. There are people who we need to see and we've not been able to see them for so long now. It is all a bit sad and miserable and dark. And yet there was that dream I had. The dream where people were saying to me, Oh, you look so good. You look so happy and vibrant. That wasn't real. Those people weren't real saying those positive things about me. They were just figments of my imagination. But look on the bright side of that. That means somewhere deep within my psyche, there's a part of me that actually probably still quite likes me. A part of me that has got faith in me. A part of me that knows how good I can be. That is still in there somewhere. Sadly, it only tends to come out when I'm asleep and dreaming. But it doesn't matter. It's there. Even right now, there's that part of me. There's that negative voice inside me. That voice of the beast saying, Ah, shut up, mate. All that means is there's a part of you, probably a very big part, that is completely mad and deluded and out of touch with reality. Where's the big surprise there? My inner negative voice is Scouse. There's probably some deep-rooted psychological reason for that that I don't want to go into. So here we are in this miserable time of year, blighted by Covid-19, not really sure of what the future is going to bring, whether we're talking about the near future, whether we're talking about Christmas, whether we're talking about beyond that. And it's all grim. And we're all kind of locked down, but not locked down, which is confusing. And all the time we've got this miserable inner voice snuffing out 
the positive side of us, this inner beast telling us that we're all lost in the darkness and there's no hope and we can't help ourselves. We need other people to come and help us. But actually, that's not necessarily true. We can help ourselves and we can start by banishing the voice of the beast and unleashing the best, that positive voice, the part of us that connects us with who we really are, the part of us that doesn't give up on us, that little heroic part of us that everyone has, everyone's got that. We've just let the real world grind it down a bit. We've stopped listening to it because we're worried what people might think if we believe in ourselves. Well, yeah, forget the beast. Listen to the best. And you can do it. You can literally stop dragging yourself out of the dark just by reminding yourself how good you can be. Be creative. Do something different. Do something that you don't normally do. Do something that will put a little smile back on your face. And while you're doing it, keep telling yourself that actually... You're all right. You're a good person. You can still be the best possible version of you. And you can do it with a smile. That's what I've done. I've started pulling myself out of the darkness by becoming a poet. I have become an actual poet. Well, you know, I've written a poem. Because I listened to the best. I listened to the positive in me. And I thought, I can be positive. And I can do stuff that's creative. And I can make myself smile. So I stared down the eyes of the thing that upsets me most at the moment, which is the whole COVID lockdown. And I wrote a poem all about lockdown, just to put it in its place. Down by the Gloucestershire border, where I hang out in my humble abode, where folks say, we live in the Cotswolds, but never mention the Swindon postcode. The village's many commuters who work in London's big companies are now sat at home on their computers, enjoying spreadsheets and filter coffees. But I'm still up every day before seven, because some of us still go to our jobs. So I drive past their houses, hard revving. Rum, rum. That'll teach the stay-at-home slobs. But it's not all as bad as it seems. I'm out teaching, not lazing in bed. I'm not getting hassled by my bored teens. No, I'm getting hassled by you lot instead. I'm not making podcasts on fashion and beauty or spending the day in my pants. I'm not endlessly on call of duty or rehearsing my next TikTok dance. I'm not hitting the gin before lunchtime, or eating myself to the grave, nom nom nom. I'm not jumping around dressed in lycra. I'm not going to be Joe Wicks' slave. I'm not playing my children at Cluedo, or rehanging the brand new front door. I'm not teaching myself how to do judo, for when I next see the mother-in-law. I'm not growing my beard like a druid. I'm not experimenting with vegan cuisine. I'm not freezing my bodily fluids and carving them into ornate figurines. I'm not watching the news because it's pointless, but I'm sanitising all of my skin. I'd quite like to go to the toilet, but I'm out of loo roll, so I'm holding it in.